So thanks so much for that introduction, Brian, and thanks for the uh, invitation here to speak today at the CPTN investigator meeting. And so uh, this is the technically the lunch session. So we're doing lunch and learn today. Uh, and we're gonna have a portal demonstration of um, some of the different uh, portals and websites that we maintain as part of CBTN. And so uh, I've got these little slides to begin our talk here, but we're gonna really be spending a lot of time on the, the platforms themselves. And so I'll give a very brief introduction uh, to what I mean when I say CBTN's cloud platforms. And then I'm gonna use them to demonstrate two different use cases uh, that a young investigator might be, be looking for. And so the first uh, situation might be if someone is interested in searching uh, CBTN's collection of biospecimens, um, how might they go about do that? doing that? Uh, they would do that in the Kids First portal once we'll provide a demonstration of how to do that. And then the second demonstration I'll provide is a, a way to do a search of different genetic data that we have at, at CBTN, and that would be done in the PTC Bio portal. And then I'll wrap up at the end very briefly uh, with a quick um, shout out to our, our CBTN training resources and some links to follow in the future. Okay, uh, so CBTN, we, we have a lot of data, we have, have our big data, and so we need a, an infrastructure uh, to be able to manage all of that. And so these are our four platforms, as we call them, uh, our four websites that we use to help uh, allow users to be able to access these uh, different data sets and, and um, information that we, we maintain. And so um, the, the two I'm gonna go in more detail about are the first two here, the Kids First Data Resource Portal. Uh, what that does is that allows users to be able to build queries uh, and explore the data that we have to be able to identify biospecimens uh, and identify participants uh, that they are, are interested for their, for their research projects. Uh, and it's also, this is also the place where our genomic data uh, and our imaging data files are available for analysis or download. Um, so then I'll also talk about the PTC Bio portal, uh, which is our second, uh, our second platform. And so this allows users to be able to identify those genomic variants that are within CBTN samples. Uh, we can also actually, there's clinical data loaded in there as well. So users are able to compare clinical outcomes within cohorts of participants. So I'll hopefully be able to get a chance to show that too. So the bottom two I'm not going to talk about today, but we also have Kavatica, uh, which Arash mentioned as, as part of his project. So Kavatica is what allows our platform that allows users to be able to run these large scale bioinformatic workflows uh, on CBTN's data or on users' own data. So you can bring your own and, and collaborate and combine with our data sets as well. Um, and then you can analyze that data in the cloud too. And then finally, we're very excited about our, our fourth platform, which is still coming soon, but that's Flywheel. And that what that is, that's our imaging platform. So it allows users to be able to, uh, to view and run workflows on imaging data in their browsers. So, so again, so those are our, our four uh, platforms, but I'm gonna focus on the top two here today. And so the first example I'm gonna talk about is using the Kids First portal to be able to search CBTN's biospecimens. And so at this point, I'm going to break away from my slides and we're going we're gonna to go into the portal itself and we're going to follow along uh, as a, an investigator might be, be looking in, and having this question of, you know, maybe I have a, a set, uh, you know, based on my research program, I'm interested in a, a particular set of, of specimens. What does CBTN have to offer that might be relevant to my research? Um, and so this would be how they would, would go about answering that question. Uh, so the first step to doing that would be go uh, to our, our website, to so the Kids First uh, portal, and the URL for that is portal at kidsfirst, portal.kidsfirstdrc.org. And so that takes you initially here um, to this dashboard page, which provides some overview summary information uh, about the, the different data sets that we have in the portal. And so I really encourage people to, to get started here um, maybe on the studies tab. And so what this does, this shows you is that it allows you to be able to uh, look at all the different studies that we have in the portal, uh, many of which are associated with the Kids First program, uh, but we also have our, our studies that are associated with uh, the PBTA, uh, including our, our CBTN study right here. And so uh, we can see that we've got data for 3,600 participants, uh, and then these are the different data types, and we have 28,000 files. 
Um, so that seems like a lot. So, so maybe we can dive in a little bit further. And so by clicking this link right here, it's gonna load us over into this next tab, which is the Explore Data tab. And so what the Explore Data tab does is allows you to be able to build queries uh, of different, um, based on different demographic, uh, different clinical information to narrow down that, that very large uh, you know, number of, of participants, number of samples into a more manageable subset that are specific to your particular research question or your particular research program. Uh, so I'm actually gonna delete that really quickly. And so here at the top, we've got our study is that we're looking at the CBTN data set. Uh, and it tells me that we've got 3000 participants. And so we've got some overview information presented here below um, as far as different data types, um, different demographic information, ages, uh, and different diagnoses as well. And so you can narrow that, that fields uh, by, by adding more filters. Uh, you can imagine a funnel that we're gonna narrow down to a point until uh, we get a smaller number of, of participants that we're interested in studying. So for example, if we, uh, one filter that we could add would be to, to look at participants that have a particular diagnosis. Uh, and so under the clinical filters here, I can click clinical, uh, and then here are different diagnoses that are, are present uh, in the CBTN data set. So these are different types of uh, pediatric brain cancers. And so for my example today, I'll select low-grade glioma I'll apply that filter. And so now you'll see a couple things just happened. One is that we added a new uh, field here that says we're looking for CBTN data and the diagnosis is glioma. And so you can also see my number went down here. So now we're only looking at a thousand patients. So we've, we've narrowed that, that subset even further. Um, and then it provides um, you know, my, my bar charts and my pie charts updated as well. Uh, so now we're only looking at the low-grade glioma sample. So you can continue to add more uh, filters. And so, for example, um, if I wanted to uh, look at, maybe I just wanted to look at the, the male samples. And so I could click on demographic filter and click apply. And now we've got this additional uh, and the gender is listed as male. Um, you can also actually update uh, by clicking these, these the graphs as well. So rather than using the, uh, the, the toolbar at the top, you can also click. And so down here below, maybe I just want to look at participants that are between uh, one to five years old. And so you can actually click that bar uh, and that will add uh, an additional. So now we're only looking at age of diagnosis is in days that's one to five years old. Okay, so now we've narrowed down. We started with 3,000 and now we're down to 160. So we've, we've really narrowed our focus a lot, uh, but maybe this is the subset that we want to, to look at for our study. So at this point, I would, I would like to go to maybe the table view because this shows us um, the list of the 161 participants uh, out here and each of them is, is labeled with a particular identification and then it tells us about the files that are available. So at this point, if I'm interested in the biospecimens, what I would do is I would go over here on the right-hand side to this download button. Uh, and what download does is it allows you to be able to download more information, basically take this table and expand it out and give you more information about those particular participants. So I wanna download the biospecimen data for these 161 participants. So I'm gonna click that button and it's gonna spin around for a couple seconds. And then there it is, it's created this Excel file that I just downloaded to my computer. So at this point, uh, I can pull up that Excel file and I'll slide it over here so everyone else can see it. So this is that biospecimen manifest that we just downloaded out of the Kids First portal. And so what this list is, <coughs> excuse me, is that we've got our participant IDs here in the left-hand column uh, and then different biospecimen IDs labeled. And then uh, this gives you more information about each of these different biospecimens that's available through the CBTN. So those include these external sample IDs. So these correspond to a particular clinical event when the biospecimens were collected. Uh, it provides information about the composition. And so whether it's uh, tumor tissue or, or blood tissue, which is used as a normal comparison, provides information about the age of the participant when that sample was collected. Uh, and then this column right here, this column L, 
Uh, this is shipment origin. So this tells us, tells you whether, you know, these samples are available. If it's listed as on site, then that means we have them in our bio repository and you're able to uh, apply to, to receive those particular samples in that shipment origin column. So this biospecimen data uh, Excel sheet, this is what you can then upload. You can maybe narrow it down and say, I, I'm interested in these, you know, maybe just these uh, one or two samples here. And so from that, you can pull the particular information you need, or you can upload this uh, directly onto the application page. So if I go to uh, cbtn.org and I'm looking to uh, submit my own um, scientific project because I have a project proposal, it brings up our, our, our request form. And if I choose to request those specimens, uh, then as part of the application process, it will ask you to uh, provide an upload file that includes that, that information uh, based in that, that Excel sheet that I've just showed you. And so um, here we go. So please uh, upload your query containing the research ID, uh, clinical event ID and biospecimen ID. And so that allows you to upload. And so I would just choose that Excel file from my computer and add that to that, that site. So that's the, uh, the biospecimen uh, request process. And so that's all done on the, the kids first portal. And so I do wanna show, so additionally here as well, uh, in addition to this big table is that we've got these links here uh, to PC Bio Portal, which is our second platform that I'm gonna talk about. And so many of these participants at this point, uh, we don't have um, genetic data for them. We only have the tissue at this point. Uh, but we're working to, to continue to get more genetic resources uh, that we can uh, share those with our, our research users as well. Uh, but for example, I'm going to click on this particular participant. And so it tells us that we have genetic information for them. And so I'm going to click on this link. And it takes me over to our second website, which is PTC Bio Portal. So PT Bio Portal allows us to be able to look at the genetic information right here in our browser uh, to be able to get more information about this uh, particular patient uh, and the one sample that we have a, a genetic sequences from that's associated with it. And so uh, this sample came from a, a male patient who was two years old who was diagnosed with low grade glioma. And so what PT Bio Portal does is it takes the complex genetic information and, and synthesizes it and puts it in your browser so you can very quickly be able to, uh, to see uh, what are the, the possible mutations that were present uh, in this tumor sample that might have caused this tumor uh, to develop. And so that's what's represented here. And for this patient, uh, there were 23 different mutations that were identified uh, by our uh, bioinformatics team. And so that's represented here in this large table and so up here at the top is this gene called BRAF, uh, and it's a fused event. So this particular low-grade glioma is associated with a BRAF fusion. Uh, but then there are, as you can see, there's uh, 22 other different genes that are also present as well, uh, or mutations uh, are also present in this particular uh, individual. So this example I just showed you is a way to kind of go from, you know, looking at this individual participant and then clicking this link, and now we can look at the, you know, the, the genetic information that we have for this one uh, sample from this one patient. So there's also a way we can back out a little bit and begin to search. And so maybe you know, we're interested uh, in a particular gene or in a particular mutation. Do other individuals also have uh, mutations in that gene? Uh, I want to search across all of the CBTN data sets. Um, so how can I search, basically how can I search by gene rather than searching by the, the clinical information that I was showing before. And so this is the, where the strength of PC Bio Portal really comes in because it allows you uh, to be able to build queries um, and, and browse the CBTN data sets by, uh, by searching for particular your genes of interest. And so here's uh, the, the, our big summary page. And so this is the, the PBTA uh, data set, which includes all of CBTN's clinical uh, and, and genomic data. Uh, and so again, similar to the Kids First portal, it gives us this very big summary view uh, with a lot of different pie charts uh, and, and bar charts and can be a little intimidating at first. Uh, but the, the key point I'm gonna show you is this search box up here, um, because the search box is what allows you to be able to search by those particular genes. 
And so in, in Dr. Weinberg's study earlier today, he mentioned a couple different genes um, that he were relevant in, in colorectal uh, cancer. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type those, those genes here in the box. And so APC, uh, KRAS, and TP53. And basically my question is, if I'm interested in studying those, uh, are, are there, is there any evidence that there are mutations uh, in any of our samples in these same three genes that Dr. Weinberg talked about this morning? And so for my demonstration today, I'm going to search across all of our genetic data that we have, all 1,100 samples. Um, but you could also narrow this as well. And so you could narrow down to just look at the low-grade gliomas uh, by clicking that button. And we're, again, we're, we're narrowing that filter. We're adding new layers here, uh, and we're narrowing the number of samples. Uh, so again, for my demonstration, I'm going to leave that open. So we're going to search across the entire set of data. I'm going to type those three genes here in the search box. I'm going to hit query. So what the query does, it brings up us first to this page called Oncoprint, uh, which provides a summary of information about uh, different, uh, the, the three different genes that we typed, APC, CRAS, and uh, TB53. And then uh, this, these rows or tracks here uh, are columns. Each column corresponds to information from one patient. And then each row corresponds to a different type of information. And so we can see uh, based on the color of these uh, boxes, it corresponds to uh, different mutations in this particular participant. So uh, PC BioPortal has a huge number of, of additional resources. And so the one I especially want to highlight today is the mutations tab. And so that's this uh, or a fifth tab down from the, the Encore print. And so what mutations tab does is it allows you to be able to very quickly understand, you know, are mutations in these genes, have, have they been observed in the CBTN data sets? And so we can look here within the mutations. And so here's my three genes that I typed in the search box, APC, KRAS, and TP53. And what's represented here is the length of the, the gene from start to, to end. Uh, and then each of these colored uh, boxes corresponds to different domains that are present in the particular protein. And then above that are these markers, uh, or these little lollipops, as they're sometimes called, uh, which corresponds to the presence of those particular mutations uh, in our, our samples, in our CPTN samples. And so it tells us not just where the particular change is, so it's happening in this particular domain right here, uh, but it tells us this is the particular uh, change in the protein, this R1114 uh, asterisk, so that's a stop uh, codon mutation. Uh, but then it also provides some annotation as well. And so, uh, so, so tell me more about this particular mutation. It tells us APC is a tumor suppressor gene. Uh, it's recurrently altered in colorectal cancer. So that uh, confirms what Dr. Weinberg was telling us about. Uh, and it tells us that this particular mutation is likely oncogenic. And then it gives us some additional information here, uh, some publications that we can go and read about, about that particular mutation and about this gene. Um, and so each of these sample IDs, these corresponds to a, a sample that CBTN has in our database. Uh, and if we click this, uh, this sample ID page, it will bring us back, uh, you know, we, now we've come full circle and now we're looking again at that summary view uh, of this one particular sample from this one patient. Uh, and this is the full length of mutations. And there's that, that APC gene right at the top. So we can do this across multiple. Uh, so we can also look at uh, KRAS as well. And so here's our, our RAS domain. Uh, and here's our different mutations uh, that are, are found in, in KRAS and then TP53, uh, where we have lots of different uh, mutations that are present. And so if you have a particularly rare, you know, so uh, mutation and you're, you're trying to get a sense of, I, I don't know if I see it, uh, you can actually, there's a search box here, which will narrow down this 164 different mutations to just pull up uh, the one that you're looking for. So if you have a, a patient, uh, for example, uh, or a particular interest in a mutation, uh, this R181C, which is maybe rarer uh, and it's not the most common mutation, you can type it in the search box and it will narrow in on just that one pin, just that one uh, set for you to look at. 
So what this does is it, it pulls it up for you and says, yes, we have two uh, different uh, samples with a, a that R181C mutation. Uh, and both of those were high grade gliomas. And again, that provides that, that annotation information as well uh, about the nature of this mutation uh, and provides some, some additional citations in the, the scientific literature for you to review as well. So I've got a couple more minutes here in my, uh, my lunch and learn. And so I want to take a little bit of time to show off uh, one more feature um, that I find very powerful about PZ Bio, and that's the comparisons tool. And so if we go back to Oncoprint, um, we can see what it tells us here is that we've got, uh, you know, this percentage of the uh, 1,000 participants have mutations in these particular genes. You can also see that some, there's some overlap. And so there are some participants that are, are, have mutations in, in both APC and in TB53. Uh, but if I scroll over, you can see that there's you know, so many more, perhaps 80 or 90% of individuals that don't have mutations in these two genes. Uh, so where might their cancer be coming from or what might be causing that? And so that's what the comparison survival tool does is it basically lets you compare and say, I, I've got this altered group, you know, these 146 samples where one of these three genes has been, has a mutation in it. Uh, but then we've got this larger unaltered group, the 971 samples where they are not mutated. Uh, how do those two groups compare? And so it's kind of like building a Venn diagram here below. Uh, and so we can compare, you know, how do these 146 participants uh, with these mutations compared to the other 971 uh, brain tumor participants and samples in our study. So for example, you can click on the survival tab and what the survival tab does uh, is it compares clinical outcomes um, for our, our, our different data sets. So it seems like here we don't have a large enough data sample size to get a very rich uh, comparison here, but we can compare other data sets as well. And so for example, in clinical information, uh, we can look at uh, different factors that also might be associated with these different groups. Um, and so you can uh, click through uh, and, and get a sense of whether or not, uh, you know, having one of these three uh, mutations is also associated with uh, a particular cancer type uh, or a particular demographic, a particular age. Uh, you can begin to, to ask questions about uh, comparisons. Uh, also, you can then say, well, just these three genes, or are there other genes uh, that are, are perhaps more likely to appear also uh, in, in individuals that have these mutations? So other genes in the genome uh, that are, are more common to be found in this altered group. It allows you to be able to look at uh, genomic alterations as well. So the comparisons tool is incredibly powerful. Uh, it allows you to be able to compare, for this example, just these two groups of those with the mutation to those without. Um, but the strength of the comparisons tool uh, really comes from the fact that you can compare lots of different groups. Uh, so you can generate uh, your own groups. And so, for example, if we were interested in looking at the outcomes of boys versus girls in our study, uh, we can click the boys and girls in our pie chart and click compare. And we'll get a, that similar compare tool uh, where now we're looking at this as our, our defining factor for our two different groups. So it really allows for not just the, you know, not just a reference of our CBTN data sets, but it allows users to be able to explore uh, and, and ask questions as well uh, of our, our different CBTN data. Okay, so I've got three minutes here at the end, which is the perfect amount of time uh, to wrap up. Uh, by talking about some of our CBTN training resources. And so uh, the two things that I wanna leave you with is if, if I went maybe a little bit too fast for you of, of how do I get more information uh, about, about using CBTN's data sets uh, and CBTN's platforms. And so the first resource I'll point you towards is our help desk. So that's cbtn.org slash help. Uh, and so I asked the website team to give me a really simple URL and they gave me the most basic one cbtn.org slash help. Uh, and so when you go there, what that is, it's a very simple uh, web page, but what it does is it provides links out to our different cloud platforms, uh, links to different training documents, support materials, uh, example webinars, recordings, um, and links out to our, our help email addresses as well. Um, so if you are, are stuck and don't know where to go, cbtn.org slash help, 
uh, is a great place uh, to get more information. And so that's our, our first resource I wanted to highlight. Uh, the second resource I wanted to highlight is our office hours series. And so, um, so the, the help desk is great. It's our, our virtual uh, way to, to help folks, but sometimes you just want to, to talk to a, a human being and talk to somebody in, in person or at least in person remotely. Uh, so that's what the CBTN office hours do. Uh, so what this is, these are hosted by me once a month. Uh, and so it's me along with members of our data access team our clinical research team and our bioinformatics team are all available there to help answer questions that you might have uh, while working with CBTN data. And so everything from applying for access all the way to running your analysis and everything in between, uh, hopefully we have the expertise to be able to answer your questions that you might have. So these are normally hosted the fourth Tuesday of every month from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and so if you check your calendars, the fourth Tuesday is next week. Uh, and so if you are, are interested in, in learning more about CBTN and keeping the conversation going after our meeting, I encourage you all to attend our, our office hour session that we're going to be hosted next week. Uh, and so we promote that on all of our social media channels. And so there will be uh, links to follow uh, in order to be able to join us in, in our discussion. And so with that, that is everything I had uh, today. And I see that I'm at 1.30. Uh, so thank you so much again, everybody, for giving me the chance to, to speak this afternoon. Uh, and I hope we all uh, enjoy the rest of our, our, uh, our meeting here today. Thank you, David. That was really perfect and, and so useful to sort of see a real-time, real-world demonstration of the, the power of these platforms. And you know, we continue to strive. It, it's somewhat of an uphill climb as, as you probably better than anyone knows, but it, I think we continue to make progress in, in making this truly accessible um, to anybody who wants to query these. I'm constantly getting emails from folks after our cell paper, like, hey, I'm interested in this protein, that protein. And, um, and it's, so we're, we're getting there, but it, it takes, it's going to be a incremental progress, I think. So thank you for that, David.